At this time, we're going to go right into a testimony. Help me welcome Michael Brown. Hello, everybody. Uh, let's pray a little bit here before I get going. Lord Jesus, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thy will, not mine, be done. Amen. Uh, that's an AA prayer. It's called the Serenity Prayer. Uh, this is kind of like a like the story of my life uh, is that uh, I was uh, born in West Point, Nebraska. I'm not going to go into that, but I grew up on a farm right outside of Wisner, and I come from a drinking family, and just about everybody else drank and that, and, and uh, I started out like a, well, as a rebel, as a a hoodlum, juvenile delinquent, better word. And uh, it was nothing to drink when you were 13, 14 years old. And, uh, well, I went through that life on the farm till I was 18, and then my mom had all kinds of problems, and so I decided that I couldn't handle her and her drinking, so I went to California. When I was in California, I got into the drug deals and the drug business, and I don't know, maybe I took too much LSD or, or what, but I, my mind left me early. I was 19 years old when I went to a place called Olive View. It's an asylum up in the valley by Selmar. And uh, I just one day woke up and I felt like I was going to die. And so I come back in, in, in uh, April or May of that year with a buddy of mine. He had just gotten out of Vietnam. And he wasn't, his, he, his, his deal wasn't working too well with him neither. So we come back to the Nebraska. But I still had the problem. Every day of my life, I felt like I was going to die. And it seemed like the only thing I had was alcohol. I had to drink to get up. I had to drink to sleep. I had to drink, I had to, drink to do everything. I had to drink to live. And uh, I lost a lot of people over alcohol that committed suicide, and, uh, well, make a long story short, for like 20 years of my life about considering the time that I was back here in California, and then till when I come to, back home to Nebraska, it, it, it was just a, un, it was it was like a terror. It was a fear every day, every day of my life. I had to drink. I had to beg for alcohol. I had to do this for alcohol. I had to. It, it was you talk about being a slave to to something. Uh, it, 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 it's something that that, that takes you. Uh, First, Pastor Paul says they'll take you to a place you don't want to ever go. And uh, well, anyway, the years went on, and, and I, I just, I guess I just became complacent with myself and everything. I couldn't handle it no more. I just couldn't handle it. Like I say, it was uh, the people I hung out with, they all drank, everybody drank, it was a drinking thing. But for me, it wasn't. I couldn't even work anymore. And uh, it took everything I had, it just, it busted me down to nothing, to where I was nothing. I, 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 I don't know, I just, uh, you would go into bars and it wouldn't take you but, I think, 15 minutes to an hour before you'd get into a good fight. 
a lot of times they would be fist fights and um, everybody trying to be right when everybody's wrong and that's the wrong place to look for for you know stuff that's uh, that's right and wisdom is the bar room everybody's the smartest guy in the world in a bar until you really until you really have to go live that life and there'd be times I'd be said, I'd be sleeping on the street and the town cop would pull up beside me look down and said my kid up and go home a million, a million times that happened and then uh, I, it, it, my my luck just ran out I just couldn't handle it no more there was it was 20 years that I and I'd get on my knees and I would beg God to take the to take the feelings that I was feeling away. Uh, nobody believed that it, it happened to me. No one believed that what I was feeling was in my head or my heart or anything. And and no one would believe that. And yet they'd always keep you well well primed on on booze. Especially around closing time. Everybody becomes a genius at closing time. And then we'd go drink more and more and more. And I'd wake up and uh, I, it just, when I look back at that, it's like Pastor Paul was speaking about this morning patience and waiting on God. You were starting to wonder. I never ever doubted that there was a God. I never ever doubted him and I never wanted to insult him because I knew he could take you out in a heartbeat. My God was a God that would he'd, he'd hit you with a big stick if you, if, if you if you screwed up. And well, I'm going to just go ahead and shut it down is that in the last time of parts of my my drinking days I remember being in my bedroom and I said, Lord, I've done everything. I, I can't I can't keep this up. I can't keep going on. I had a twenty five automatic pistol and I, I loaded it and I, I just said, This is it. I put that that pistol to my head and I could I still can feel my trigger finger tightening it around. The, the, the trigger and I heard a voice just like I'm talking now say you do that I can't help you in, in AA they have like a divine encounters and stuff like that but I wasn't in AA I wasn't in nothing I was in a very very dark bad place and I needed a touch from God and I shot the wall, I didn't shoot me. And then I went into what they call the delirium tremors. If you think alcohol is worth it, the delirium tremors is, a, it, it took that hell, that, 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 that terrifying life and it made it all the worse. It lasted for three days. And I was alone except for our Irish setter. And, uh, Anyway, I woke up the third day. I went to wipe my hair out of my face. I went through, it, like I said, I can't even describe it. And my hand was steady. It's shaking a little bit now, but it was steady. That was 37 years ago. 20 years of living in a sewer. And then 37 years that the Lord gave me back with, I think, is it going to say, where the canker worm will replace and, and that. And uh, I, 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 I got my life back. I got my life back. And I knew then for sure that God's real. He's very real and loving. And you got to wait and wait, and wait, and wait. It, 
like when the way I felt like the minutes would turn into hours and hours, days and days, months and then years and years. But the Lord loves you. The Lord loves me. And I, I remember Ron when he when we had our five reasons. Ron gave all five reasons. He said because he loves me. 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 And he certainly does. And he loves you. If you ever have trouble with any kind of drinking thing or that, find help. Go to God. Go to God. You can't get it in an asylum, that's for sure. You can get a lot of pills in an asylum. You can meet a lot of people that never will make it. Uh, people that will attempt suicide and, and achieve it. But uh, I'm just so happy that I'm born again. Amen. And, uh, you know, when this class over, I know I'll be, man, I, that, that day will be a great day. That's everything I got, guys. That's all I can think of right now. And, and, uh,